Welcome to Super Sunday. We're so glad that you're here, that you've made it. Uh, if you're new with us and you haven't been to a Super Sunday before, you are in for a treat. Uh, it is going to be an amazing morning. We're going to do every Super Sunday, we look at the same things. We look to celebrate what God did in 2019 and look forward to what God is doing in 2020. And so we do Super Sunday a little different. It may seem a little odd, uh, but we hope that you grab some food, that you sit down, have some good laughs, and learn a little bit about what God is doing. So let's get to some news. If you haven't heard, uh, today is Super Bowl 54. Uh, yeah. Uh, and it will match the San Francisco 49ers against the Kansas City Chiefs. And all of the city of Lubbock is buzzing to support the Texas Tech Red Raiders. I mean, Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. For many of you, the Super Bowl may not be about the, the game itself, but rather the commercials or maybe even the halftime performance, which this year will highlight Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Yeah. What you may not have heard is that there's a little beef in between J-Lo and Shakira leading up to the Super Bowl about who's going to have the most time on the stage. Uh, now, if they were to get into an actual fight, I don't know who would win. I have, however, seen Shakira in concert, and let me tell you, her hips don't lie. Some of you may have also heard of the controversy that we're having similarly to that here at Aldersgate between our own versions of J-Lo and Shakira. In other news, you may have seen a video floating around the internet recently about an interaction that the Pope had with a woman on New Year's Eve. If you haven't seen the video, here it is. Just to give you a heads up, if you see Ryan in the lobby after the service, be careful. He's been taking notes. So we just entered into 2020. Uh, with, uh, with a new year comes the promise of new beginnings. Many of you are like me who began the new year with a new dedicated focus on maybe eating healthy, maybe working out. Uh, I, I do enjoy working out. I enjoy going to the gym, especially late at night. If you know me, I like to go, you know, 11 o'clock at night, go to like 1 a.m. I just, I'm a night out, so I enjoy that. And recently, uh, they put a new machine uh, at my gym that I have absolutely fallen in love with. I also overheard a guy the other day at the gym, he was talking to his trainer, and he said, hey, what machine would you recommend that I use if I really want to impress the ladies? As far as eating healthy, I want to give you a little uh, biblical knowledge. Uh, the Bible refers to meat 290 times. However, it only refers to vegetables 13 times. So my encouragement for you in 2020 is to eat biblically. Here at Aldersgate, you may have seen some of the things that are going around. We've had our gratitude challenge where we look to, to be grateful for the things that are around us. You may have been uh, participating with us in Core 52, uh, just 52 weeks that we're working to build our Bible IQ. Maybe you were a part of our one word challenge at the beginning of 2020 saying, what's that one word that we want to see God move in the things that are going on in 2020? And it got me thinking about maybe some other things that might be different if we were to look at them intentionally. Things like, what if it had been three wise women instead of three wise men at the birth of Jesus? 
What if more parents looked at their kids when they act up in church the way we look at someone that we saw at the club last night? What if other people could see the way your mom actually looks in the car on the way to church? <laughs> and finally, what if more of us could cook hibachi the way our college pastor Matt Martinez does when the song Oceans comes on? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we have a great show for you this morning. It's going to be fun. We hope you participate. Grab some food. Have some laughs. Give it up for the Tumbleweeds. Here at Aldersgate, we love uh, to talk about gratitude, and we, lo we love to talk about giving thanks. And that's often expressed in thanking many of you for the ways in which that you serve so faithfully as a part of being a part of Aldersgate Church. And, and so this morning, I'd like to write uh, some thank you notes. I'm running a little bit behind. Would it be okay with you guys if I wrote out some of our thank you notes for this morning? Would that be okay? Awesome, awesome. Hey, Levi, could I get some thank you, write, thank you note writing music? Of course. miss it. Oh, there it is. Y'all give it up for Levi Stinson. Thank you. You're so kind. Thank you, lead pastor Ryan Smallwood, for teaching us all what it means to find fashion in our 40s. No, hey, Levi, the whole point of a magic pen uh, is that it only plays the music when the pen hits the paper. Well, yes, but it, it's called a pickup note. But, um, no, no, no. But, that um, may work in music, but not in magic. It, it's a... It's... No. So let's, let's try it again. Okay. okay. You ready? Okay. Okay. So you did it that time. Okay. You I'm ready? quick. No, see, it... <laughs> the, the, the pen hit the paper that time, and there wasn't music. You said to drop the pickup. No, so play the pickup... But when the pen hits the paper. Ah, okay. I that's got that's three P's in a row. That's an alliteration. Pen, paper, pickup. Please. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Guys, that's not even scripted. Here we go. <clears throat> Thank you, Aldersgate Parking Lot, for making us question our level of Sunday morning intoxication when pulling in a church. Some of you get that joke more than others. Thank you food at the Super Bowl party, for hammering the final nail in the coffin of my New Year's resolution. Some of you are like, no, Super Sunday food in the morning. Thank you, New England Patriots, for losing. Too soon, too soon. <laughs> Levi, I told you people would love that joke. You know, my family, are, we're Patriots fans, so that just hurts. Wait, hold on, for real? Yeah, in fact, one time we actually went to Gillette Stadium. Really? It was, it was really cool. Uh, what's funny, though, is as soon as we drove in the parking lot, our tires mysteriously lost some air. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, here we go. Thank you, exercise, for being the only thing stopping me from getting in shape. Thank you. Texas Tech football, for helping us all understand it's okay to not be okay. But it's not okay to stay that way. Thank you, Chris Beard, for just being you. Love me some Chris Beard. <clears throat> Thank you, Aldersgate for being a group of crazy, broken people desperately in need of Jesus who somehow ended up here instead of the two for 20 at Chili's. Some of you are like, well, I know I'm going for lunch today. And finally, thank you, Dallas Cowboys, for being like a Chick-fil-A employee and not showing up for work on Sundays. Ladies and gentlemen, that has been my thank you notes. 
Give it up. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Give it up for the weeds. For years, you have seen them on the platform, playing their instruments, singing their songs, and praying fervently to get you to clap your hands. Now see them as never before, up close and personal. More than shaking their hands in the lobby while they walk their way to the restroom between services, this is your chance to come on board and be part of a team, a worship team. But this is more than just what you see on the platform. There are actually things that happen in that elevated booth behind you. And in that one door that just seemed to show up one Sunday and now has lots of people diving in and out of it each Sunday morning. You may also have noticed real live people working the cameras now. Even the one camera that the guy carry around on his shoulder and can never seem to stay in one place. Actually, he can sit still if need be, but he is part of the team called production. Together, these three teams, platform, front of house, and production make one super team we call the Aldersgate Worship Cooperative or AWCO, and we're looking for you. You don't owe us money, we don't think, but we're looking for you to serve with us, to help us spread the message of Jesus through song, atmosphere, media, and online. If you have any sort of talent in music, technology, or can merely follow simple directions, we can use your help. To get involved, simply text the letters AWCO to 97000. You will receive text messages from Aldersgate Gate Church. No purchase necessary. Message and data rates may apply. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're glad that you're with us this morning. Uh, throughout this morning, you're going to see us talking about three things that you're going to hear a lot about in 2020. Uh, those three words are worship, community, and mission. And all of our guests that are with us this morning will be talking about those things specifically. And so let's give it up for our first guests, Diane Burnett and Glenn Mullins. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Diane, Glenn, thanks for being with us this morning. Uh, Diane, you just told me something interesting in the green room that I didn't know uh, about you when it came to being a part of the worship team here at Aldersgate, this lifelong fulfillment of this girlhood dream. Tell us a little bit about what that was. So it's actually two dreams, okay? So one of the earliest memories I have as a child was that I would carry around, I don't know if some of you may remember this, it was this Fisher Price boombox that had like a tape player oh, on yeah. it and a microphone attached. That was my jam. And inside that boombox was a tape of Debbie Gibson. Well, and so, course. yeah, Debbie Gibson, for Wait, those of you, you that don't for know. Everybody, yeah, yes. Under 40. <sighs> Under 40. Okay, yeah, so um, that is like the Ariana Grande, like the pop star of like the 80s, okay? Even though I look a lot younger than that, it is the 80s, okay? So um, I would carry this Fisher Price boombox around, and I remember we were out to eat one night, and this sweet little old lady came up to me, and she was like, Oh, sweetie, what's your name? And I was like, Debbie Gibson. <laughs> And I pushed play, and I continued to perform Debbie Gibson for Obviously. this lady. Yeah, so um, that dream soon shattered. Um, and so I went on with life, you know, picked the tears up, kept going. And then, um, end of my high school, I know I'm, I'm totally aging myself, but this new show came out called American Idol. Oh, yeah, any American Idol fans yes, in the Yes, any American yeah. Idol. Yes, so it was, you know, people going in front of these judges that, like, were these yeah, like, nobodies. Like Simon Cowell. Simon Cowell, yeah, Paula, Paula Abdul, oh, you know. Oh, Randy. Randy, oh, yes. So wow. they went in front of this judge, and they auditioned, and I mean, like, Carrie Underwood and Kelly Clarkson, like big stars, came from the show. So I was like, there's still time. Yeah. There is still time. And then I realized that it was not my time. <laughs> yeah. So that was the shattered second dream, dream that two. became shattered. However, however, you know, um, I always wanted to be a pop star. And so um, the time came for me to audition for yeah. the Aldersgate worship team. Oh, yeah. 
and my lifelong dream of auditioning for American Idol came true. Because there were, there were judges? There were a panel of judges. Okay, so they made us all stand out, and we all had numbers, and we got <laughs> called in one by one, and I had to go stand center stage, which, come on, that's not the hard part. Yeah, that's I'm, easy I'm meant for, for that. Um, so we had to stand center stage, and we had to perform songs while this panel of judges. So, like, there was a Simon Cow? Uh, have you met Jason Archuleta? Okay. <laughs> Okay, yes. what, uh, mm-hmm. Apollo, Apollo Abdul? Jessica Stafford. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, yep. Was, was there a Randy Jackson? Jeremy Barbie. <clears throat> good typecast, yep. mm-hmm. good typecast. Yep, good typecast there. But um, they did it to themselves, really. And so <laughs> I had to perform, and then next thing you know, they told me, that's enough. But I did get the golden ticket. I was so <laughs> excited, but then turns out everybody got one. Yeah, so, um, but it's okay. I'm now part of the worship team. Yeah. And I'm living out that lifelong dream. Got my Sharpie ready. So let me now hitch you up with an autograph. But um, yeah, it was great. Awesome, was great. awesome. Mm-hmm. So yep. Glenn, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've, I've never seen you up on the platform singing. That's and I've, I've never <laughs> seen you playing an instrument. No. Uh, so my, my question is, this may be an awkward question, but what are you doing up here? Yeah. You know, my family asked the, the same thing when I, <laughs> the, when I told them I was going to be up here. They all said, why? Yeah. And I am absolutely the last person I thought would be up here representing the worship team. Okay. But I'm actually part of the production team within oh. worship. I'm one of the folks that runs the cameras and or one of the folks that hides in that back room back there. That scary back room. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so obviously, um, maybe you're not quite as into the limelight as somebody else sitting on your couch. Exactly. I am not meant to be front and center on this stage. Well. And so, so how does that work for you being a person who wants to be more behind the scenes that still wants to be a part of the worship team? Well, I don't know if y'all had noticed, but church is kind of an extroverted place. There are a lot of people here, and I am not an extrovert. But we're all encouraged to be involved, to be plugged in. And it turns out that... Being part of the production team is an excellent place for an introvert to plug in. Yeah. I get to wear this cool uniform every Sunday, so I'm wearing a black shirt, I'm hiding in the back, and like last Sunday, a lot of people didn't even see me. It was amazing. Yeah. Per- <laughs> perfect for you. <laughs> yes. Di- Diane, tell us a little bit about, um, now that you've been a part of the worship team for a while now, what does that mean for you? How have you seen Jesus in the way that you've been a part of the worship team here at Aldridge Gate? So, I mean, truth is, I worship all the time. I love to be a Beyonce in my car. Anybody else? I mean, if you are beside me, I am jamming and I have no shame in my game, okay? But what's really cool about being the worship team is that I'm worshiping a Lord who doesn't care if I look like Beyonce or if I just look like Diane Burnett. (laughs) So um, the great thing that the worship team has done, it's allowed me to worship and to build this new relationship with the Lord and like worship him in a way that it really doesn't matter what I sound like, what I look like, that I'm just really doing it for him. And so that is one of the great things. I feel like I'm more connected to the Lord. I'm more connected with the congregation. And I feel like I really am living out. Maybe the Lord did have a lifelong dream for me to be a pop star, but maybe it was a worship star. Well, you will always be our Kelly Clarkson right here. Thank so. you. Thank you. Gl- yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Glenn, help us understand uh, from a production standpoint, being back in the back room behind the camera, uh, how is that an act of worship as well for you to serve in that area? It's an act of worship in that for the people who can't physically be in this room on Sunday mornings, I'm helping to bring the service to those people, people yeah. who are watching online. They get to be a part of what's going on here without having to be physically in this room. Yeah, and you get to be a part of that. Absolutely. And there's obviously people that who are sick or traveling, uh, maybe that have sick kids. Uh, our Impact Campus watches our service uh, exactly. every week as well. And so just lots of different ways that people who can't be here, you get to be a part of bringing the worship experience to them. And that, that is really neat, knowing that I get to... Uh, bring this worship service to people beyond these walls. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Hey, so what, how would somebody get involved if they wanted to be a part of the worship team uh, here at Aldersgate? Well, the video we just saw said to text AWCO to 97000. If you're like me and you forget numbers, you, you don't remember that, 
feel free to talk to Jason, talk to me, absolutely corral one of us, and we'll be happy to help you get plugged in. Yeah, we'll get your auditions scheduled. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> have, have new judges ready for you to go. So obviously, if you want to be involved, uh, Diane and Glenn will both be in the lobby after the service. You can ask them specifically some ways that you can get involved, whether that's in the limelight or maybe that's behind the scenes. Uh, so you guys, thank you for being here this morning. Would you guys uh, want to play a game with us today? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, love absolutely. to play a game. Awesome. Let's play a game. Yeah. yeah. going to play a game that you may have seen before. It is very fun, very exciting, especially because you get to lie in church. It's called Box of Lies. And so we're going to have our two competitors have a seat in the stool. They will each randomly choose a box from the lovely card over here with one of these numbers. Inside that box is a mystery item that they have not seen uh, that they will show to you so you can see what that looks like. And then they will begin to describe that to their competitor. At that point, they can choose to either tell the truth or to lie. Diane, because you are a lady and we want ladies to go first, you may choose your first box. Audience, help her decide what box she wants to choose. Five, five, five. Oh, she went with nine. Box number nine. Box number nine. Diane, remove the item from your box. That okay, interesting. <laughs> did you just smell that? I did. <laughs> All five senses are involved. Okay. That came from Jason's house. Be careful. Are we sure? Okay. Um. It is legal. <laughs> um. I think, in at least 48 states. Um, let's see. Um, it's sticky. Real sticky. Um, and it looks like, oh God, I don't even know. Um, it's honeycomb cereal with Chocolate syrup on top. Honeycomb cereal with chocolate syrup on top. Syrup. 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 Yes. Okay. In Texas. Syrup. Um, is there like you said it's sticky? Is there like debris in it? Is there? Uh, is it? A... I said honeycomb cereal. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Has it been chewed? Does it look like somebody ate some of it already? Affirmative. Um, you said it came from Jason's house. Um, probably. Supposedly. Right. Right. Well. Okay. Michael said yeah. it came from Jason's house. Um, I'm going to say you're telling the truth. So the truth. And the answer is... <laughs> she lies! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Diane for being a great liar. <laughs> All right. Glenn, it is your time to choose okay. a box. Audience, help him decide. Which one? I heard a four. Okay, I'll go with four. Going with box number four. Oh, okay. <laughs> this one's actually three items. Oh, yay. Um, it clearly wasn't purchased today. Okay. Um, it's, I think, Ryan Smallwood's favorite thing, actually. Oh. Because um, it's um, something you eat. Um, I think you could call it the Lord's chicken. Ooh. I see, because I see no pickles on it, and I see bacon added to it. And then there are some potato products, and... So, a Chick-fil-A sandwich. You could say that, yes. <laughs> um, along with a beverage that no longer has any carbonation in it. Okay. Because, like I said, it did not come from, was not purchased today, obviously. They're closed, yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. So, I think you're telling the truth. Actually... 
I am not telling you. He lies! Oh. Ladies and gentlemen, after round one, the hey. score is tied one to one. Dang. So Diane will choose her second box. Help Diane choose her second box. It once meowed. It doesn't anymore. Okay. Wow. It's brightly colored. And rhymes with orange. And it once meowed? It did. Oh, Mm -hmm. okay. So it's, it sounds like you're describing a dead cat. (laughs) <laughs> That's a sore subject for me this week, but um. exactly yes. Um, does does it does it have a smell? I noticed you sniffing at it. Slight, just Ooh. a little one, just a little one. That that mm-hmm. that doesn't sound good at all. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I'm I'm kind of inclined to think that you're lying. <laughs> Never, but yes, I was. She lies. Yes. The score after round one and a half is Glenn two, Diane one. Before we get to the <gasps> second box for Glenn, Diane, would you like to tell everybody why people are calling you a cat killer this week? I really don't, but I will covet any prayers um, for forgiveness from all of you. Um, I didn't realize the neighbor's cat, who happens to be my daughter's art teacher, was behind the wheel or the tire of my car when I went to reverse on Tuesday. Oh. Yeah. And apparently it was her, indeed her ninth life. So. That is all. Glenn, That's, choose your yeah. second box. Audience, help him decide yeah. which box to choose. Go up high, go up high. Box number one. Glenn, what is in <laughs> your box? This is... Uh... Not something I would have expected to see in church. <laughs> um, so it has an element from Despicable Me. Um, I've never seen that. Think Minions. Um, but you also have to think in terms of, like, say, a disembodied head. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and maybe just for grins, throw in a wig. What? A wig. Oh. So that, that uh, pretty well encompasses it. Minions, a disembodied head, and a wig. And it's not Matt Martinez with hibachi. <laughs> no. no. Um, I'm going to say you're telling the truth. Actually, I am telling the truth. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a tie. Give it up for our competitors. Obviously, if you want to get involved in the worship team, you can text AWCO to 97000 or catch Diane and Glenn in the lobby after the service. We will be right back after this commercial break. Give it up for the weeds. Remember the time, way, way back in the day, you'd be relaxing at home in the evening, and excitement would build within you when a knock would come to your door? Oh my, who could that be? Children, honey, come to the living room. We have company. Seems these days that unless you're waiting on a delivery, we take more of a, oh my gosh, who's knocking at our door? Everybody hide, get down, turn Netflix off, and maybe they'll think we're not home type of attitude. There was a day when we spent time with people we knew, more often than with people who just parent kids interested in the same things as our kids. We'd like to take that day back. The best way to meet people and to be involved is to be involved with other people. 
With so many places to serve at Aldersgate, there is a place just right for you. Whether you're looking to serve with kids, students, on the host team, or any of the tons of other serving opportunities here, we want to invite you to join us, to build stories with us, to build community with us. Please check out all the places to get involved and build community by checking out aldersgate.online slash serve. We want you to make this place your home. We are glad to have you this morning. We are also glad to have with us the best house band in all of Lubbock. Get up for the Tumbleweeds. You may not know how great and wonderful they are, but we want to show that off for you in a game that we like to call Freestyling with the Weeds. And so what we're going to do is we're going to put to the creative test our Weeds band, and we are going to get some interaction from the crowd to do this. And so what I need is I need some people from the crowd who are going to help me with this next game. So we're just going to start over here somewhere in this section. Let's see if we can find somebody. Um, <laughs> let's see if we can find somebody. Um, yeah, I like that guy in that, that J.J. Watt jersey. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's come over here. Okay, let's come over here. All right, so I'm going to give you that. Stand up, stand up. Would you go play our game with us? Yeah, sure. Okay, here, hold that mic. Okay. Okay, um, so sir, what, uh, what is your name? Uh, Nick Rents. Nick Rents. Now, is that spelled like Rents or Rents? Uh, like Rents, but with an extra E. Okay, cool. Yeah. So that would be um, like Rents. Yeah, but it's Rents. <laughs> Nick Rents. Okay. Uh, Nick, what is it that you do for a living? <laughs> I currently do nothing for a living. So you, House husband. So you are unemployed. Correct. Okay, unemployed. Uh, he's unemployed, guys. Um, anybody who's looking to hire a Texas Tech grad who has an engineering degree? Yes, sir. Talk to him. Uh, but right now he has no job. Nick, when you were growing up, what was your, what was your job? You wanted to be, you're like eight-year-old boy. Yes. You're sitting there on a Saturday afternoon. Yeah. When I grow up, I want to be a? Uh, NASA engineer. So you were a nerd. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, he wanted to be a NASA engineer, and you ended up in Lubbock, Texas. Yes. At Texas Tech. And I didn't want to be Aldersgate. an astronaut. I wanted to be an engineer. Oh, just the engineer. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, so far, Holly, we've got Nick. Um, uh, he's unemployed. Uh, when he was a kid, he wanted to be a NASA engineer. Um, if you were to say the favorite, are you married? Yes. You are married. Okay. Um, <laughs> if you were to say, what is your wife, the thing that your wife cooks? that you love the most, mm. what would that be? She makes a really good pot of spaghetti. Spaghetti? Yeah. <laughs> of all the things that you could have said, because a lot of things rhyme with spaghetti. Okay. Um, so, Holly, um, if you haven't met, we've got a guy named Nick here. Um, he's unemployed. Um, he's married, so he's not available. Uh, but he wanted to be a NASA engineer when he was a child, and his favorite thing that his wife makes uh, is spaghetti. Uh, so Levi, um, I was thinking, he looks like a pretty trendy fella. I mean, pretty he's got trendy. that Texan jersey, kind of a, a pop, oh, there backwards hat. Yeah. That definitely requires maybe like a, a pop tune, like a, 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 a Oh, we got hits. pop. Oh, we got pop. Yeah, so like a top hits pop song about Nick, the unemployed, wanted to be a NASA engineer who loves spaghetti. Take it away, Weeds. Well, let's see what we can do, right?
awesome. That's awesome. All right, let's see if we can find someone else who wants to play our game. Let's see uh, what section are we go to. Oh, we got to go all the way over here. Excuse me, excuse me, excuse me, pardon me. Oh, chips. Thank you. All right, let's see. Let's see if we can find somebody over here. Um, <coughs> uh, Ma'am, right here. <coughs> Would you like to play our game with us? Yeah. All right, stand on up, stand on up. Y'all give her a round of applause. <laughs> All right. What, uh, what is your name? Lauren Ramos. Lauren. Okay, so we got Lauren here. Uh, Lauren, who is your favorite football player? Patrick Okay, good, because you're wearing his jersey. <laughs> That was about to be real awkward. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lauren, what um, do you think is your favorite thing about your mom? Um, no, you can't look at her. <laughs> she's kind. She's pretty. All these things. She's pretty. She's pretty. Okay, good job. <laughs> Woo! Man. She was about to get grounded right there. So we've got Lauren. Uh, she loves her some Patrick Mahomes. She thinks her mom is pretty. Uh, and what is it that you could be anything you want when you grow up? What pediatric is that? Pediatric surgeon. You want to be a pediatric surgeon. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, very much more noble than a NASA engineer. Okay. She's also unemployed, her mom says. Um, okay, so Holly, we've got Lauren here. Uh, she loves her some Patrick Mahomes. She thinks that her mom is pretty. Uh, and when she grows up, she wants to do surgery on kids, but like to help them, not hurt them <laughs> in, in a good way. Okay, so Lauren, Patrick Mahomes, pretty um, pediatric surgeon. I, I think, Levi, I want to I throw a curveball at you uh, and see how, how good the weeds actually are. Um, what, what about a bossa nova? Do you think you can play a bossa nova? You know, I think we can okay, try. Okay, let's sing I, a I song about Lauren as a bossa nova. Time for one more. Let's see if we can find one over here in the center section somewhere. Uh, let's see if we can find us a random. I see you eyeing me. Uh, let's let's come over here, sir. Would you want to play in our game with us today? Don't make me have a meeting tomorrow. We <laughs> oh. don't see job security right here, uh, <laughs> sir. What uh, what is your name? My name is Ryan. Ryan, okay. Ryan, Ryan, what is it that you do for a living? I'm your boss. <laughs> okay. Um, so that makes you a pastor. I'm a pastor. And a boss, mm -hmm. but not like the boss, Maybe just a, a boss. <laughs> the boss is right here. Yeah, there we go. Um, Ryan, if you could say your uh, favorite thing about your job, what would that be? Uh, I, I would have to say the favorite thing about my job is our connections, Pastor Raquel. Okay, Raquel, yeah. 
Well done, well done. That's so um, I don't have a meeting tomorrow. That's right. We, we know who the boss is. So we've got Ryan here. Uh, he's a pastor and a boss. Um, his favorite thing about Aldersgate is the Connections Pastor Raquel. Um, if you were to say that there's one word, one word for all of 2020 that describes your fashion, <laughs> what would that be? <laughs> Hot. Hot, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Holly, we've got Ryan. Uh, he is uh, a pastor, and apparently he's my boss. Um, but his real boss is actually sitting over here in the front row, Raquel. Um, and he thinks that 2020 is going to be uh, his year for being hot on the platform. It is hot. Okay. Hot. <laughs> All right. Um, that, that sounds a little too festive and energetic. Um, I think because he's a pastor, and pastors are supposed to be serious, right? No. Um, Levi, what if we had something like real serious and dramatic for the song about Ryan? I Can got you. Okay, let's do it. That has been uh, Freestyling with the Tumbleweeds. Give it up one more time for the band. Gentlemen, has it not been a fun morning so far? Yes, yes. It's going to continue to be that way. Our next set of guests are going to come out, and they're going to talk about the next section that we're focusing on in 2020, and that is community. We've talked about worship, and now we're going to talk about community. So put your hands together for Jaime Coy and Lexi McVean. That's going to be a, a hit record right there. Two. Hit record. Hey, so we're talking community. Uh, obviously, um, when we talk about community, sometimes that's a hard thing for people. And so, uh, Lexi, start us off helping us understand uh, maybe how you got plugged in here at Aldersgate and became a part of community here. Yeah, so back in June of 2018, I got invited to come to a women's small group on Wednesday night. Um, I hadn't been plugged into a church, much less knew about Aldersgate at all. Um, and so I showed up on Wednesday, and I never left. I just keep coming back every Wednesday, and um, now I've joined the church, and yeah. it's just been an incredible catalyst to um, my walk. Yeah, so you, you came back the second time, uh, maybe, maybe a little un, unwillingly, or tell us, uh, you were, you were kind of talking about some deep-seated emotional right. hardships. Right, So I was uh, personally accosted to continue coming back. Okay, um, so... So help us understand, because we may all we may have people here that can can connect with that and 
resonate with that. Who, who was it that you felt accosted by uh, when it came to pressuring you to be a part uh, of this? If I have to name names, uh, it'd be Raquel Martinez. Okay, okay, okay. But. Now, I think this is good because part of, you know, fleshing out these emotions are right, right. maybe being able to, to connect and resonate with each other. So are there other people that are here this morning that might also say that they uh, have been personally victimized by Raquel Martinez <laughs> pressure? Yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so obviously we love Raquel and the way in which yes, she helps absolutely. people get plugged in. Uh, but obviously you're, you're here now. And so what has that meant for you to be a part of the community of Aldersgate Church? Um, it's just been amazing. Um, I got baptized here back in December of last year. So I went from the small group to baptism to joining the church. Um, so it really just kind of built off of this women's small group. Um, we meet on Wednesday nights at 6 o'clock. Um, right now we're doing Celebrate Recovery, which Jaime will talk a little more about on Wednesday nights. Um, but it's kind of got me involved in serving in the church, um, you know, helping out with events that we have. This weekend we've got IF coming up, yeah. which um, is an online uh, live stream women's conference. So if you're interested and you're free next weekend, Friday and Saturday night, we'll be doing that. But um, you can go online and register or show up Friday to register. But yeah, it's just been a really cool way to get involved um, and kind of brought me out of my shell a little bit. I would say going from not knowing anybody to now you're a part of the church council. Right, yeah, and... I am. I'm on the church council now. Um, and like I said, you know, when I moved to Lubbock in 2015, I have no family here. Um, I kind of started fresh. And so this was the, the breath of fresh air I didn't know I needed. Yeah, so. awesome. Jaime, tell us a little bit about how you got plugged into community here. Obviously, you've been here for a while now, so tell us what that means for you to think of how you got involved in community at Aldersgate. Uh, well, the, uh, hold on, I'm on, I'm on. Oh, yeah, it sounds good. The first time I came into uh, Aldersgate, I actually walked through those doors uh, hungover, and I didn't get, like, uh, the stink eye, or I didn't get the, ooh, he stinks, uh, <laughs> I got welcomed into a community that, you know, that really just uh, took me right where I was at. Yeah. And uh, that, that, was, that was pretty cool. So what did it mean for you to, to be able to come in and feel like this was a safe place to be yourself? Uh, uh, golly, a load off my back? Yeah. For sure. Um, you know how community has really shown up in our lives. Uh, in our, in our, recently, uh, my wife got diagnosed with breast cancer. And she's having surgery come this Thursday. Yeah. So we've had a lot of people that are coming around us and continually picking us up and lifting us up, not just here on Sundays, but staying in touch with us all throughout the week. Um, the community is not just our family here at Aldersgate. We've got people in North Carolina, Georgia, New Mexico, Hawaii that are aware of what's going on and praying for us. Even got a little tweet from Ed Werder from ESPN last yeah. night uh, saying, hey, we're with you, buddy. Yeah. So obviously that doesn't happen just uh, because of the diagnosis. Uh, it's something that, that happened uh, years and months before then. Talk a little bit about what that means to build community before the crisis happens. Right. Uh, for I mean, for Sandy and I, it had to mean uh, getting out of our comfort zone and getting honest and getting vulnerable and, and shedding, the, uh, shedding the front and just allowing people in and just being real with people, not just on Sundays, but uh, getting phone numbers. Community doesn't mean that you just show up on Sundays and get it done and then go on. Um, community can be just getting a phone number today yeah. and just checking on somebody throughout the week. Yeah. Lexi, if somebody here uh, wants to take that kind of bold step and say, hey, I want to get involved in some way, uh, what's kind of that, that entry-level first step to be able to get involved in community here at Aldersgate? Myself, if you want to find me after the service, um, I can kind of guide you in some directions and places that you can just show up. I think the biggest thing is just showing up. I mean, show up to an event, show up on Sunday, um, and just, you know, find one of us and we'll get you plugged in. Yeah, for sure. So obviously, uh, Lexi and Jaime will be out in the lobby after the service. So if you want to get some more information about the different groups that we have or different things like that, uh, obviously, uh, Lexi touched a little bit on the if and some of the women's things. Uh, Jaime leads uh, our CR on Wednesday nights. Uh, which is a great place to plug in as well. And so just things that you can get involved with very easily, maybe even just being the person that's greeting people as they walk in the door uh, to invite others into this community that we have here. So if you want to get some more information on that, they will be in the lobby after the service, as well as our Connections Pastor Raquel Martinez. She would love to connect with you as well. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Give it up for the weeds.
have been on a mission trip, long or short term, local or overseas. From building homes to serving food to building relationships and connecting with kids, mission is everywhere. It's not merely traveling 2,000 or more miles away to a village with no running water. It is also traveling two miles away and taking a meal to a family dealing with loss. It is helping to shop for kids during Walk to the Manger in the Christmas season. It is helping with outreach events like VBS, Bonanza, or back-to-school backpack builds. But yes, it is also traveling 2,000 miles away to villages with no running water merely to love on people. If Jesus has called you to be a part of His kingdom, He has called you to missions. He has called you to serve others, invest in His people, and when you do, He will meet you there and do far more to change your life than you could ever do to change someone else's life. So please, call this number, 1-800-55-what? We do not have an 800 number for them to call. Fine. Then to make a donation, please make your checks out to... Really? No donations either? So what should they do then? Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Well, that seems simple. To get involved, please simply go to aldersgate.online slash missions to see the upcoming trips we have or send an electronic mail, a little fancy, to ginger at aldersgate.online. Thank you, and please serve responsibly. Gentlemen, we have covered worship. We have covered community. It's time to look at our third word for 2020, uh, and that is the word mission. And so our next two guests are all about that. Uh, They may not look related, but they definitely know each other in the biblical sense because they've got four kids to prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for Jeremy and Ginger Barbie. So Jeremy and Ginger are here with us, uh, so let's uh, tackle the elephant in the room first. Uh, Jeremy, you're a good-looking man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah. Wow. Can, can we get an applause for how good-looking Jeremy is? Yes. <laughs> now it's a serious business. Jeremy, you have traveled all over the, the country. You're not from around here. Uh, you've been involved in missions in a number of different areas in your life. How have all those kind of traveling around and being involved in missions shaped who you are today? Sure. I'm uh, originally from Richmond, Virginia. Um, And so, yes, I don't sound like I'm from West Texas, believe it or not. (laughs) Um, But it's been great just getting an opportunity to travel um, all over the country and really seeing um, what does missions look in different areas. I had opportunities to go to New England and serve uh, as a college pastor um, there for a year. And so really reaching out to college students there in an area where um, here in West Texas, you know, you can say I'm a Christian um, and I believe in Jesus, and people don't look down on you. Yeah. Um, but going in an area there that they look at you like you're crazy because you say, oh, yes, I love Jesus. Um, and so it's been interesting just being able to go and just serve people and then love on them um, and just where they're at. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Ginger, uh, for those who don't know, Ginger, you're the uh, new missions director here at Aldersgate, right? Yeah. Um, and so tell us a little bit about, for those who don't know you, how kind of your upbringing and the things that you've experienced in the past have kind of led you, the Lord has led you to this place to serve as this role. Yeah, so my missions pastor growing up was very influential in in my role and ultimately ending up here. Um, He always encouraged me, and so my first kind of big missions thing was I spent a year in inner city Chicago. So for a year, and that was, that was awesome. And uh, he just kept pushing me and encouraging me, and so here I am. Yeah. Ready or not. (laughs) Yeah. Jeremy, tell us a little bit about why it's important for you personally to serve on mission, whether that's locally, uh, nationally, globally. What what is that? How is that important for you to serve? So in Matthew 28, um, we have what's called the Great Commission. And so Jesus tells the apostles, um, they'll be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and to the uttermost parts of the world. Um, And so it's important for me as followers of Christ that we live that out. Yeah. Um, God has called us to be in mission every day. And so whether that's in our workplace, whether it's at home, um, here at church, just loving on people, 
Um, we're called to be in mission. And so knowing that missions doesn't have to be going to Timbuktu um, and using a squatty potty, but um, <laughs> sometimes missions is talking to your neighbors and really serving your neighbors who may need someone to help mow their lawn yeah. or they need someone to rake leaves for them. And so just serving people for Christ is important. That's what we're called to do. For sure, for sure. So Aldersgate obviously has a, a long tradition of being uh, a very mission-oriented church, and, and people who've been around for a while know that that's true, but that's something that is being kind of revitalized in this new yeah. season and the new vision. Tell us a little bit about what that new season of, of being involved in missions as a part of Aldersgate looks like, Ginger. Yeah, so we have two trips coming up. Um, Alaska is in July. It's a multi-generational trip, and then Costa Rica is in June. And those are still open. You can still apply. It closes tomorrow. So come find me afterwards. We also have um, our Global Impact Celebration is coming up in March. And this is really a chance for everyone to get to meet our mission partners. We're bringing in 20 of our 24 mission partners. Yeah. So it's going to be a really neat time for you to see not if you're called to serve, but where. So. Yeah, so tell us a little bit more about the GIC because that's something new to Aldersgate um, and this idea of not necessarily seeing a picture in an email, but actually like shaking hands and meeting faces. Why, why is that important for somebody that's sitting here to get involved in the GIC? Yeah, we really want to create relationships with our mission partners and not just send money. And so this is kind of twofold for us to get to know them better and them to get to know us better and then to see where we fit. Yeah in that service. So. For sure. Jeremy, somebody's sitting out there and, and they're saying, I, I want to, uh, but I just don't know if it's worth it. Uh, maybe help us understand why it's worth it for us to be involved in missions. Sure. So many times uh, you hear people talk about missions and it's like, I'm going to go and do this and people are going to be better because of me. <laughs> uh, and really the thing that I've learned uh, and continue to learn is that missions is really about what God is doing in you. Yeah. Um, and so by the fact, by the act of being obedient, by taking a step out of faith um, and going out and serving other people, God actually makes a change in your life. Yeah. And so your life has changed. Your life is impacted for the better through being obedient to what God is calling you to do. Yeah, for sure. And, and I think that's, that's such a good thing when we think about what that means for us is that we're going out and we're being the hands and feet of Jesus. And sometimes we only look at the people that we're affecting. Oh, we helped this person do this or this person do this. Uh, but God is changing us and shaping us and helping us grow in our own discipleship walk through that. And so if you are thinking, yeah, I need to be involved, uh, that doesn't mean that you have to go across the world. Uh, that may mean one of our local partners or maybe a national opportunity. Uh, maybe that is something globally where you take a, a step out of the box and say, yeah, I'm ready to, to see what that looks like uh, to go outside of the, the United States to serve Jesus. And so uh, I know that Jeremy and Ginger will be out in the lobby after the service. They would love to talk to you about any of the trips that are coming up uh, or maybe just some of the, the easy ways here locally that you can get involved uh, in missions. So you guys, uh, you guys want to play a game with us? Sure. All right, let's play a game. We are going to play a game called Russian Egg Roulette. If you've never seen the game, it's very simple. Inside of this carton, we have six hard-boiled eggs and six raw eggs. And so what each contestant will do is they will pick one egg, and they will take that, and on the count of three, we will all count to three together, they will smash that egg on their head. The first one to smash three raw eggs on their head is the loser and the other team will win uh so obviously we want to be about being chivalrous and so uh ladies first ginger which egg would you like this one okay she's going with this one 
All right, here you go. On the count of three, everybody counts together. We'll go three, two, one. Three, two, one. Uh All right, so after one round, the score is one to nothing. Jeremy, choose your egg wisely. Okay, he's going to the corner. The corner. All right, on the count of three. Three, two, one. It's hard boiled. Hey, you got you to really, really smash. We want it all inside that hair. I heard earlier, do we have any care, hair care professionals that egg is good for your hair, right? Yeah, see, okay. I heard one say yes. All right, which one do you want next? This one? Okay. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Oh, it's hard boiled. Okay, Jeremy, that means the odds are not in your favor anymore. Okay, which way we go? We got a group of four, group of four. Let's go bottom left. Hey, this one? Yeah. Okay. In three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> so after the second round, the score is one to one. Nice. All right, here we go. Which way are we going? Right here? Okay. In three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> Jeremy, the odds just got better for you. <laughs> this one here? Was that like a, a mildly, did, did he smash it all the way? Yeah, I did. It's oh, it's hard boiled. It's hard boiled. It's just the yolk. Oh, because it's the leftover yolk. Okay, so that means it's two to one, which means if you get a raw egg, Jeremy wins. No pressure. <laughs> all right, where are we going? Where are we going? Right here? gentlemen, give it up for Jeremy and Ginger Barbie. <laughs> Obviously, if you would like to get involved in what missions looks like, uh, she's not always covered in egg yolk. She would love to talk to you about what that is. And so Jeremy and Ginger will be out in the lobby after the service, um, egg yolk and all. And she would love to talk to you about any trip, any experience, local, national, global, anything at all, they would love to be able to connect with you. So you guys give it up one more time for Jeremy and Ginger Barbie. We'll be right back after this commercial break. Water baptism is going public about your faith in Jesus and communicating to the world your commitment to following him. If you've recently decided to follow Jesus, then the next step is to publicly display your faith through baptism. Please visit us online if you have any questions and to let us know if you're ready to take that next step. Every child matters to us and deserves to hear about Jesus on their level. That is why here at Aldersgate, we are starting a ministry that will allow us to engage children with special needs. We want every family to be able to attend church and to always have a peace of mind about the well-being of their child. If you feel like your child would benefit from being a part of the special needs ministry, we would love for you to join us for lunch and an informational meeting. Anyone who would like to volunteer or be involved in any way is also welcome to attend. Here at Aldersgate, we realize that as parents, we can't do it all alone. We want to be a church that comes together to help raise up future generations. Infant Dedication Sunday gives you an opportunity to express publicly your desire to lead and spiritually guide your child for the rest of their life. To schedule your child's dedication, please call or text the church office anytime.
All right. Welcome back. Welcome back. We just want to give you a heads up that uh, if you're with us for the very first time, uh, this is your first experience at Aldersgate. We're not like this all the time. Uh, we are kind of crazy, and we like to do things over the top, but we would love for you to come and join us next week. Uh, next week, we are actually starting a new series uh, called Grow, all about how we grow with each other and grow in our relationship with the Lord. And so it's just an amazing time that we're going to walk through uh, what that means for us to grow as believers. And so we want to invite you to come back. Uh, if you are with us for the first time, or maybe the first couple times, uh, we would love for you to reach in that chair in front of you, uh, pull out that Connect card, uh, fill that out, and drop it in the black giving boxes. It's just a simple way for us to know that you're here, and maybe you want to get involved in some way. That may be the worship team. That may be a part of community, or maybe that is serving in some way in missions. We would love for you uh, to get engaged in 2020 with where the Lord is leading you personally and where he's leading us as a church. And so we want to thank you for being here. Uh, we hope that you go out. There's plenty of food. Grab some more food. Go home this afternoon. Uh, cheer on a big game. Uh, cheer for the Chiefs, obviously. Uh, but, but go out. Have a good time. We're glad that you were here. So give all of our guests a round of applause. They will all be out in the lobby and would love to connect with you. Give it up one more time for the tumbleweeds. You guys are dismissed. Mm -hmm.